Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. We're going to talk today about whether you should buy seeds or whether you should buy started plants. This video is especially useful, I hope, to newer gardeners who uh, are asking themselves, you know, should I get seeds? I see all these people in the gardening forums and online and in social media buying seeds and starting seeds. And I also see all the wonderful plants at the big box store and what's best for me? I'm going to talk today about the benefits of each, whether you should start your own garden from seed or whether you should start with uh, little purchase starts. Let's talk first about seeds. Should you sow your seeds indoors early under grow lights? Should you sow your seeds in seed trays and put them in the sun outdoors? Should, should you sow them directly in the garden? What's the benefit of that? You can do any of those. The benefits of sowing seeds and, and the cons of sowing seeds, uh, the, the best one is that the variety that is available to you is astronomical. You can find just about any kind of seed you like, any kind of vegetable, any variety, any kind of heirloom from a number of seed companies who will be glad to sell you some, some packets. I have here in my hand a bunch of seeds from uh, Baker Creek, from Seed Savers Exchange, from Seeds for Generation, from Kitazawa Seed, a wonderful Asian specialty seed. I mean, you could get stuff at this place that you can't find anywhere. And uh, big box store brands like this one here, um, you can get seeds, tons of varieties, and you can experiment, you can have fun. That's the biggest plus for, for seeds, in my opinion. Um, you can customize the choices. If you have all, all these seeds and you go and you look on their websites or you look at the seed company's catalog, you can customize what seeds you buy to match your climate requirements. Some, some seeds don't do well in certain climates. So if you have the ability to shop a seed catalog, you have the ability to purchase plants seeds that are perfect for your growing area. Another benefit to purchasing seeds and starting your garden with seeds is that it's, it's cost effective, it's cheap. You, you can start seeds with just a seed packet and some creative thinking. Or you can go on the other end of things and you can invest in grow lights, you can invest in a heat mat, and you can start your seeds indoors. Uh, that's one of the downsides to starting seeds indoors is that there's an upfront expense and sometimes it can be pretty expensive but it can also be super cheap. Let me show you this uh, tray here. Here we have a bunch of bunching onions. This is an Asian variety that I got from Kitazawa Seed Company, and it was cheap. It was like $4 for the seed packet, which is what one plant's gonna cost you at the big box store. All I did was sprinkle seeds on cheap potting soil and then sprinkle some potting soil over the top. I watered them in real good and I left them outdoors. These have been outside their entire life. No, no need to harden off, super easy to do. And look at that, I've got a ton of bunching onions now that I can plug in in my garden wherever I want. Another benefit of starting from seed is the availability of seeds. They're everywhere. You can go down to your local big box store. You can find seeds in the grocery store. You can walk the dried bean aisle of your grocery store and plant those dried beans and they'll grow for you. You can, uh, you can go online and order seed catalogs, or you can look at websites. There are tons of seed companies, dozens and dozens of seed companies. And though the virus, the pandemic we just had, um, did affect the availability for 2021, there's still plenty of seeds out there. There's a lot of them. Some very good companies you can choose from. Another benefit is that you can start seeds indoors and start them early get a head start on your growing season. If you have a short growing season, then you can put your seeds in, in, uh, in indoors. You can start your seeds early under grow lights and bring them up eight to 12 weeks sometimes before your average last frost date comes. And that's a way to get a jump start on the growing season. You're essentially making starts for yourself rather than having to go down and buy them at the store. That's another benefit. Um, it can require expensive lights and heat mats and it can get costly, but if you invest in, in a little bit over time, some good seed trays, uh, a good set of lights, uh, you can actually, you can actually uh, store up for yourself uh, enough equipment that you can spread that investment out over time. Some folks begin seeds indoors uh, under a cheap shop light, uh, the fluorescent shop light that they get down at the, at the hardware store. Uh, that's an option. Some people start their seeds in a south-facing window and while uh, that can work, it doesn't always work. 
So it can have some costs up front if you're going to start your seeds early. But to get around that, if your growing season is long enough, you can just start your seeds directly in the ground. Here are some beans that I started from seed. Old homestead beans. And you can see they're coming up at a little bit different rates. And like this guy must have been planted a little bit deep. That guy a little bit deep. Some of them are coming up. But you can see they all came up. Now this, this was sold to me years ago. Another benefit of seeds is they keep very long. If you store them in a cool, dry place, they can keep for years and years. And so you can reuse your seed packet when you've got some left over, just put it away and use it next year. You can store your seeds in a cool, dark place and they will keep for years and years. This is a little photograph organizer. It's got little uh, individual containers in it. And that's a good way to keep your seeds organized. Although this one's full. I don't have I don't have another one. I need to get another one. But that's a good method for saving your seeds. There's another advantage to starting from seed. You can choose varieties like open pollinated seeds or heirloom seeds that allow you to save your seeds from the from your harvest and plant them again. That's even more economical. Plus, you can learn by planting your your own saved seeds again. You can learn how to breed, and that's kind of cool, isn't it? This is from last year. These were Cosmos and that's probably one of the easiest packets of seeds I ever saved. One of the benefits of starting your own seed is you can start a whole lot of plants and have a surplus. And that gives you backups. I call them my bee team. Uh, they sit on the bench in their pots and, and they grow. And if I need plants, if one of my plants dies, then I can easily get one of my backups. All these little tomato starts I started from seed. And these guys are my backups. If I lose tomatoes out there, I have cheap backups. Now, I also have plenty to share. Plenty to share with friends. You could sell them, you could give them away, or you could grow them in pots if you're not growing in the ground. But you can always have a surplus of plants if you start your own seeds. It's very economical, and you can choose the best ones that come up. Yes, I am an advocate for starting your own seeds. These are my pepper starts. I have planted these from seeds, and so these are all my backups. Look at all that surplus. I'm going to be able to give some to my son. I'm going to be able to grow some in pots. Look at all the surplus herbage I've got. I've got tons of chamomile. I could pot those up and have extra. I think one of the most enjoyable benefits from starting your garden from seeds is the sense of accomplishment you get. As a gardener, you see that tiny little seed and you plant it in the ground and next thing you know you've got big plants like these and you're eating out of your garden from a tiny seed. And that's why I started the Single Seed Challenge is to appreciate that single tiny little seed and the potential that's stored in there, the beauty of life, the beauty of the cycle of life and death in the plant world. It's an amazing thing. So. Go take a look at that single seed challenge and see if you'd like to participate. There is a downside to starting from seeds is that some plants, like blackberries here, some plants don't start well from seed. You can do it, but it's much better to purchase like a bare root plant like this or a goji berry. You can't really start goji berry seeds. They are propagated through cuttings. Same thing with figs. A fig is actually an inverted flower. The seeds inside the fig generally aren't going to grow for, them, for you. You start fig trees from propagation and so you start cuttings like this. So seeds aren't for every kind of variety. There are some trees that you grow from seed that will grow for you but won't give you a very good tree. These are apples. They're started from grafts and you can see that that graft on top of that rootstock is starting to bud out. That is going to give me a very powerful rootstock that would not produce good apples but the apples on the scion wood is going to be very good now I could plant an apple tree from seed but it's going to take me five to seven years to get fruit on some apples on this kind of starting method well you get fruit in two to three years Let's talk now about buying starts from the store. Now when I say starts, it means they already started the seed for you. Big companies like uh, Bonnie Plants, are there. Bonnie does a good job at starting plants in regional centers where they start varieties that are going out into that region and those varieties tend to grow well there. That's one of the benefits of buying starts is oftentimes the plants are 
selected for your area. Uh, buying starts is good for your, your short season areas. If you have a short growing season and you're not starting your seeds early indoors by yourself, well, the big companies are doing it for you. They get you a jump start on the season because they're growing in uh, big production houses where there's controlled climate and they're getting you a head start on a short growing season. If your plants only have, if you only have 90 days to grow food, then you need to go with starts more than likely. Um, usually when you buy starts, another benefit is they're usually very healthy plants. They're usually hybrids. They're selected for disease resistance. They're uh, very tough plants and oftentimes when you buy these starts, you're, you're getting some pretty good plants. When you buy starts, you're not you're not having to invest in seed starting equipment or there's no upfront cost. Usually it's just go down to the store, make a selection and bring them home and you're in business. You can start planting right away. So there's no need for expensive setups when you buy your starts at the store. Another benefit is that it's easy. If you're a beginning gardener and you, you don't really, you, you don't have a lot of knowledge about gardening just yet, it makes it really easy to get a successful start if you go down and buy your starts at the store. That is an easy way to get into gardening and I strongly recommend it. And though I start my own seeds and I start tons of seeds every year, I still buy starts. In fact, I've got some out here in the garden that I bought just the other day. These I purchased as starts. This is Perilla. These I grew from seed. Dwarf tomatoes. Yum. There's a, another benefit to buying starts. You don't have to harden them off. When you start seeds indoors in your house under lights or in a south facing window, those seeds are being babied. They're not getting the full magnitude of sunshine on their foliage. And if you just bring those right out and plant them in the garden, they're gonna, they're gonna, they might die, but they're certainly gonna have trouble. They need to be hardened off. They, they need to be made into tough little plants who can handle full sun. And that's a process that it's a little different for each plant, but you, you expose the plant over time to the sun and I usually that usually takes me a week well that's a week of work you know in and out in and out and well if you buy your starts guess what they're already hardened off usually they're sitting outdoors at the grocery store or at the big box store and they're sitting in full sunlight um, when you buy those plants I like to select the ones that are actually in full sunlight and not the ones way in the back that who knows they may have been in the shade for a while but they're already hardened off for you so you don't have to go through that process that's a good benefit now there are some downsides to buying the, uh, the plants, the starts at the store. One of the downsides to buying starts is that you have a limited availability of varieties to choose from. The plant companies can only start so many plants and they're going to choose the popular ones. Um, they are popular, people like them, they do well for you. You can get a Roma, a beefsteak, several kinds of cherry tomatoes at the local big box store. But if you want something that's like a an unusual variety or you want to try some giant amana orange from uh, you know the Amish country or you want to or you want to grow some some unusual heirlooms then you're gonna to have to start from seed because the variety the selection is just not there um, there's often some specialty seed or there's often some specialty plant nurseries that will provide those kinds of things I found some Korean perilla which is something that I, I was planning on growing from seed I found some at my local nursery. It was awesome. There was only a couple left and I've planted them in my garden. So yeah, that sometimes you find it, but usually the, the, the selection of varieties is not quite there. Finally, I think the most significant uh, con when you're buying your starts is that they are expensive. This uh, squash plant right here, the squash plant was like $2.50. All the other plants in this bed that are not squash uh, were cheaper than that one plant. All those peppers are from seed that I started myself, but there are four squash plants in here that I purchased as starts. Well, that's, that's 10 bucks, you know? $10 is a lot of seeds. I can buy several kinds of variety. So it can build up, it can get expensive. If you go down to the big box store and buy, you know, tomato plants, say you want 10 tomato plants, well, that's an investment. And that's the biggest knock against, uh, that's the biggest con when you're buying plant starts. Let's go look at some starts. Here we are at my local equine and pet center. And they've got some bonny plants out here that look pretty good. Let me show you what to look for and what to avoid. 
you're buying these kinds of plants, obviously you would avoid that guy. But uh, you want to look for plants, in my opinion, that are younger and smaller than they are mature. You want to avoid root, roots getting bound up in those small pots. These plants right here are entirely too large for these little pots. Now that's a healthy plant, needs some pruning, but I would buy a smaller version of that. This plant right here, you get two of them in one. Tomatoes divide easily. Look for that. Yeah. So uh, one thing you want to do is avoid plants that seem stressed, diseased, or sun scalded. You want to avoid plants that are discolored. You want to avoid plants that are laying over like this. These plants look like they're too big for their pots and uh, are starting to get sick. Another thing, I prefer to buy plants that don't have fruit on them. When a plant has fruit on it in a tiny little pot like this, it, this plant is too immature for that fruit. That plant is stressed and the fruit on there is telling you that it is, uh, it's bolting to try to complete its life cycle because it feels like it's stressed. So I avoid these kinds of plants that are large and already have fruit on them. You might think that's a head start, but it's not. You'll want to research your variety. There are some plants like cucumbers that don't do well being transplanted. There are some cucumbers, most cucumbers prefer to be direct seeded. But if you're going to buy your cucumbers, be prepared to snip out a lot of those little plants. That's too many plants for the space. And cucumbers don't divide well. I would also avoid plants that have signs of disease. While these plants sit out here, uh, they can get pests. They're exposed to the open and you know, you can get pests that come and harm harm your, your plants and lay eggs underneath. Always look underneath to see if there are any insects that have laid eggs on your plants that you're going to buy. Here we have a serrano pepper that's entirely too large for its pot. If you buy this, you'll want to uh, kind of tease those roots apart. That's in the wrong spot. Another thing. Always look at the label. Don't go on the sign itself. Always check the label. And sadly, some I've seen kids think it's funny to swap labels around. So, yeah, watch out for that. You want to avoid plants that are looking like there's nutrient deficiencies going on. You want to avoid flowering plants. These uh, pepper plants are stressed out, just like those tomatoes. They're putting peppers on in the pot that's too small for the plant. That's a sign of stress. I'm going to buy some herbs, I'm going to buy some marjoram, I'm going to buy a cone flower. And uh, yeah, it's just easy sometimes to buy these and plug them in where you have space. So just look for healthy plants. Smaller is better. Don't buy the gigantic ones with fruit on them. And don't buy the diseased local. Yes, the food store has a good variety here of good seeds from my favorite seed company. This is good to see. So there it is, the benefits of starting from seed and the benefits of buying starts at the store. They both have benefits. I practice them both. But I hope it's been helpful to, to help you make decisions, especially if you're a new gardener, that it's, it's, really, it's really easy to do both with a little bit of knowledge. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Please subscribe to our channel. We're about to hit 100,000 either tomorrow or the next day. I'm so excited. That's a great milestone. So I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your, your, uh, your views and all your subscriptions. It really means a lot to us. Hey, like us on Instagram as well, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.